Then I have Superman Returns, a video game, which in my opinion is 110% better than the movie. If this was the movie, you'd be having another sequel, and I liked it more because Brandon Routh actually had the chance to like have some dialogue and stuff, and he's not a bad Superman at all. Very good, and explains the whole story. Like that would have been cool with him, like instead of go missing out on five years to find Krypton, him being captured by Mongrel would just be all like awesome, Mongol. It was just really, really good, especially the end part with the twisters. It's like Smallville, and the comic is really good. And then this is the only Lego game I have. The other ones are fun, but uh, this tied me over till uh, the period in between Dark Knight the movie and Batman Arkham Asylum the game is Lego Batman the video game. One of the funnest Lego games ever. I would suggest it, especially if you're a fan of the older films, will have it. Tim Burton? Yeah. This is a game for you. And I got this at a GameStop, so the case was like this used one, so I just got the album cover and printed out a cover. This is one of the best combat based games. I'd say the best Marvel game is the Punisher. Like this, if Thomas J. was in another Punisher, this would be the sequel, seriously. I kind of liked Warzone the movie a little bit for the action and stuff, but like, if Thomas Jane got to play out the Punisher like he did in this game, and with the story and Marvel and like the Kingpin and everything, would have made one kick ass movie. Like this, and, like if they base a movie off a comic and stuff, they should just base it off this game and make the movie seriously. Especially now as Marvel Studios, I mean, it's just really, really, really awesome. And there's some brutal ways you could kill criminals in it too and interrogate, it's nuts. You really get to be the Punisher. And then, to my favorite game. I like Batman Arkham Asylum and City, but this still is, like, number one. And like I said with my movies, I have, like, 50 of them in number one. This is, like, my favorite game of all time, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. I would direct a movie out of this. That's how awesome this game is in the 80s with the soundtrack. I wouldn't even rate a 5 out of 5, a 10 out of 10. 11 out of 10. It broke the bar. I mean, this is just an awesome game with an awesome story. It has a great character, uh, Time for City, played by Ray Liotta. Philip Michael Thomas plays uh, Lance Vance, who also played Tubbs on Miami Vice. Really good. Really, really good. I mean, this is just like the Godfather sandbox games, in my opinion. Or maybe Grand Theft Auto 3 could be. And this is Godfather 2. I mean, this is good. I, they would probably be older by the time I get to direct. But if I had a movie out of this, I'd have Ray Liotta still as Time Versetti. I like Tom, Tom Sizemore's voice as uh, his boss, uh, Sonny Ferrelli. But I'd probably have Robert De Niro so you get a good fellas reunion. And then I originally was going to have Samuel Jackson maybe play Lance Vance, but then he was in San Andreas, so maybe Jamie Foxx could play him, which would be weird because he played Tubbs in the movie, but yeah. I would definitely have that and have it like the 80s period. You have the teaser trailer of the movie just be like Time for City driving around Vice City with Billie Jean playing like it did at the beginning of the game. The first song in the game when you play this when Hurricane Hermione is going is like Billie Jean. Just have that as a teaser trailer. The theatrical trailer can be I Ran by Flock of Seagulls. That's like the theme song for this game. It's like an awesome song with the trailers and everything. It's just, oh. It's one of those great games where I don't think there's going to be another game like this. Unless they make a Vice City 2. Which Vice City stories I had. And then I got a... One of my nephews stole it from me. It was, and then they got in bad condition when I got it back. But that was a great game too. But this... I mean, there's been other Grand Theft Autos that are good. But this one's still the best in my opinion. Even better than San Andreas. Because I, I just don't like the game crap. Like This is just the best Grand Theft Auto. With the mob and everything and the story. Style. This one just has style. It's just oh, wow. This is one slick game. I would highly recommend playing this. And especially with the soundtrack, you can just drive around listening to the '80s soundtrack. Another game that's in my top, I would make a movie out of, is a Legacy of Kane series, in particular Legacy of Kane: Defiance from Soul Reaver. You get to play as Kane and Raziel. This is one awesome thing. This would be like. One of the best uh, vampire films that they made into a movie. It'd be really hard, though. You'd have to get a series and make it like Lord of the Rings, where you can have, like, the Blood Omen story and the Soul Reaver story, and then end it with this, and, like, have it in, like, three or f four to five films, probably. 
Yeah, you could have like the Broadway actor Simon Templar play Kane in the movie. When I was younger, I was thinking maybe Jeremy Irons could have played him, or even Hugo Weaving. But after looking at it now, I was just like, you know what? Simon Templar would rock in this role since he's a voice. I mean, he's, Kane's just like one bad guy. He's just he's so bad. He's good. I mean, you just love him. He's one of those evil bastards. Like if they had him in a movie, he would like destroy every other vampire. That's how awesome he is. Like if they had him, he, vampires in my opinion, Kane is like what Batman is to superheroes. Where it's just like they're superheroes of DC, Marvel. It'd be a Twilight interview, the Vampire and Rice Dracula, but like Kane is just like in a whole another league of his own. Then I have the last crash I have is Wrath of Cortex. Not bad. Then Need for Speed Underground. Street racing game. Not bad either. A good soundtrack. And I have 007 Nightfire. It's okay. Not as good as Everything or Nothing, though. Now, in another awesome game where you get to play the bad guys, GoldenEye Rogue Agent. Great trilogy I would make a movie out of. This is my brother's, the first tour, and the third one's mine is Devil May Cry. I was either thinking Christian Bell could play him, or you know what I was thinking? Maybe Tom Wellen from Smallville, or even Thomas Decker could play him, because he can kind of get that dude-type mentality from Sarah Connor Chronicles, have his hair white. He could definitely play uh, Dante. And that's just one awesome cover there. That's just like Summer Blockbuster sequel. And then, uh, it's a special edition, but, uh, I got the original one inside, so I didn't take the cheap way out, easy way out of the game. I actually had to play the original version. That was hard, <laughs> but it's good. Another one I wish they didn't mess up on. I knew the movie wasn't going to be like the games because the second and third would probably be rated R, and since Disney did it, they should have got like a real guy, like Persian or like a Middle Eastern guy to play him. But I would have picked maybe Orlando Bloom or RF Bay from the Mummy Oda Fair to play him instead of Jake Gyllenhaal. This is one awesome game series. And the second would have been cool. I thought Universal would have made it better than Disney. Then you could have had God Smack Eye stand alone in the actual movie. Then the two thrones. Great conclusion of the series. Before they did Assassin's Creed. Then with more Legacy of Cain is my brother's Blood Omen 2. Brutal game. Especially with the heart and fog and mist. The top game of all time with Vice City and Arkham City and Asylum is Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. Probably goes with uh, the only game I haven't played that has been adventurous is this. Had to be Uncharted. Uncharted was like the last game after this that was this great. To any Indiana Jones film fan, I recommend it. Another one is Final Fantasy X, which is actually the only other game besides Red Dead Redemption I've actually freaking cried at the end. That's how great it is. I would make it into a movie, definitely. Definitely. I don't know how I'd get as tight as maybe Zac Efron or the guy from Call X Y, but I really want to know. And then for Aaron, I was thinking, I don't know, Tom Cruise could have played him older, or even HRG from Heroes could play Aaron. Another one good is Final Fantasy XII. Very good. Kind of like the Star Wars of Final Fantasy. Prequel wise, and then Jack 2. Again, with the sequel, better. And then Desert Setting with Jack 3. Then a Star Wars Battlefront. Mortal Kombat Armageddon, which, like the other one, you get to play all the characters. Another game that's better than the movie, and it's kind of a sequel, is Ghost Rider. And then I have the Spider-Man, the movie video game, which is good, but not as good as 2. 2 really brought it to a whole new level. And probably the best superhero game, too, besides before uh, Ark of Asylum. And Terminator Dawn of Fate, highly recommended. The next Terminator movie, Terminator 5, should be based off of this. Then I have Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, and that concludes my PS2 games. Then I have uh, my PlayStation 3 games, Tony Hawk Shred, with the board over here. Then Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Then Rock Band 3, which I found for $7.99 at Toys R Us, with I have the guitar there from uh, Roars of Rock. Godfather, the Dawn's Edition. Pretty good. 
I like 2 a little bit better though because of the 50s music in the radio, but it's not bad. Early PS3 game. And then I have Fight Night Round 3 with Oscar De La Hoya. Which I could not believe admitted to taking drugs and admitting the fishnet thing. That's just kind of crazy. Then I have Spider-Man 3, which is another superhero game that's like a lot better in the movie. If this was a movie, they wouldn't be having to reboot. Just got Venom there. He looks more like Venom than he did in the movie. Then I have Stranglehold, which is really awesome. Max payne Bullet Time. Sequel to Hard Boiled. For some who may not have known, Chow Yun Fett is Agent Tequila. Then you have Dark Sector, which is a great horror video game, great graphics, and it's kind of crazy because I imagine Tom Welling kind of playing this role. Like if you saw Odyssey in Season 8 of Smallville, and Michael Rosenbaum, Lex Luthor, plays his voice, so it's kind of crazy. Then I have uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Very good. Force Unleashed 2, which is not as good. Short, but I say it's worth it for that Darth Vader fight on uh, Kamino at the end. That makes it. But you know what's even better is this, uh, the DLC uh, indoor mission. They should just make a Star Wars game of like, what if this happened, and just make the whole game like that, because it was much better. But it's not bad. Same with we're playing Star Killer. We also played Doomsday Davis Bloom on Smallville. Then I have Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, which is one awesome fighting game. And I haven't played the new one yet. I know the new one's really awesome, but this is pretty cool. I like playing as Flash and Superman. Kind of wish I had a sequel, though. Like Zod, Martian Manhunter, Doomsday. That type of stuff would be cool. This goes on my top adventure games. Probably best game on the PS3 besides Batman. Is Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Don't mind Naughty Dog to Crash and Jack. Then I have the second one. Which pretty much is like Raiders, Temple of Doom, and then it goes kind of Last Crusade here. Okay, I thought this one was a bit rushed towards the end though, but uh... I didn't like the fact that it didn't come with a cinematic viewer. That really ticked me off. I wouldn't have bought it, because you can watch it like a movie and it's just like, damn. Another game besides Batman I've played on hard is Resident Evil 5, which is really awesome. Kind of concludes it a bit, but I hope there's like one Resident Evil game where you get to play as all the characters from all the games. Albert Wesker 5 from Afterlife was from this, and it's really awesome. Very good. Too bad it's not like the games the movies aren't, because this would make an awesome movie. What I would do, like, after Resident Evils are done, I would, like, remake the series and call it Biohazard based on its real name. And just have it, like, Biohazard 5. Another great game is very different than the other games, especially first-person shooters in Mirror's Edge. I would make this into a movie. As a matter of fact, my point-of-view movie is kind of inspired from this. That and The Matrix a bit. It kind of inspired me. It's like, oh, this would be cool if they made this into a movie. Or like a movie where instead of watching a movie, you get to experience it. Closest I got to that was seeing Avatar in 3D. True 3D, not the post-production stuff. GTA episodes from Liberty City. I played 4. This is really the rest of 4, but this, especially Ballad of Gay Tony, has to be the best Grand Theft Auto since Vice City. And you know it's good when New York Times. The New York Times says one of those great rare games. Awesome. Again, they made me cry at the end. Red Dead Redemption. Very good. Then I have Eleanor. Yeah, you know, I like games that are very cinematic since I'm into movies. Tron Evolution's awesome. And I have Guitar Hero Warriors of Rock. Really Probably the best Guitar Hero since 2, I would say. Too bad it's the last, but I'm kind of glad they ended it on a high. And I have Batman Arkham Asylum. Welcome to the Madhouse. You can play as a Joker. And then Batman Arkham City. Which is not as good, in my opinion, as the first one. The gameplay and everything else is, but the story is not as tight as this one. But I think it's because the first one... Introduced a unlike introduced a, a different 
subject or a different story we haven't seen where basically the first one's like one bad night with like every person he's pitted behind Arkham Asylum trying to kill him. Batman's like worst night ever. And that's just like a story that has so many possibilities where Arkham City was just... It felt too rushed. Like I felt like by the time he got to Rachel Ghoul, Rachel Ghoul, I mean, who goes strange? And then Rachel Ghoul gets killed and was like, what? I, there should have been another mission... Or another level where, like, you get to fight him and then go to the Joker and then Talia. And then I felt there should have been something afterwards in the Batcave or something with Alfred and Nightwing or something. Where you kind of saw what happened to Batman. But in a way, Batman kind of did get destroyed or got defeated that night considering one of his arch nemesis basically died. Some part of him is not going to be the same. But I'm interested in seeing a third. I want them to make a Superman game since there are some references to Superman. To be honest, after what Azrael said, I'm curious to what's coming to Gotham. I think the next one should be Gotham City. I actually thought the sequel to Arkham Asylum should have been Batman Gotham City. But maybe they're solely taking Arkham out so you can have what the next one be like Gotham City. That would be cool. Or even have Superman in it as a playable character. Like a World's Finest type game where they're both in it. Maybe the bad thing that's coming instead of Ray Rachel Gold would be like Darkseid or whatever. I also wouldn't mind seeing them do a Justice League game with this type of mechanics. Can you imagine like the fighting with like the countering and everything and playing the Flash? That would be nuts, but yeah, I just felt it was a bit rushed at the end. Even though it's still a great game. I did like the whole last scene between him and the Joker though. Very touching, very sad, and Mark Hamill did a great job. I'd highly recommend this even for casual gamers, but like these two games is pretty much what Batman Begins and Dark Knight did for Batman on film, but like in video games. Is that good? It's just one awesome game. Well, that's it for my video game collection. Hope you all enjoyed.